From KREX 5 Storm Team, this is your forecast first. Good morning, Western Slope. Thanks so much for joining us on your Tuesday morning, 6 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. And we're just looking at some very clear skies. You can see right behind me into the Grand Valley at our America's Mattress Live Tower camera right now. But we're also looking at clear skies around our entire region. And our temperatures are very cool for this morning in the 20s and even teens right now. 26 in Grand Junction, 19 in Montrose. And also we're looking at teens right now up in the higher elevations. We'll get very clear skies for today because nothing is really happening on our radar in satellite. And you know what that means? Well, it's just going to be a very sunny and very calm, cool kind of day. Temperatures will be in the 50s, but we actually have some warmer temperatures coming our way. And I'll tell you when those show up coming up. Good morning. It's time to wake up, Western Slope. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your day with all of us here on Wake Up Western Slope. Happy Tuesday morning to you. I'm Katrin Asaf. And here's the top five stories you need to see to start your day. Veterans Day is a holiday to honor all American veterans living and dead. And what better way to commemorate the holiday than at the Western Slope Vietnam War Memorial Park. Carry X 5's Julie McCarthy attended the event yesterday to learn the significance of the holiday in the Grand Valley. A large turnout gathered at the Vietnam War Memorial in Fruta for a Veterans Day ceremony. The ceremony is significant for the community, which has a large veteran population. Well, I think it's important when you consider the number of veterans we have in this area. Veteran Michael Edgar served in the Army for close to 22 years, and he attended because... It's important for all of us veterans to be, you know, the fact we all served our country uh, in more, more than one way. Joanna Glacius is the director of the Colorado Division of Veterans Affairs West. So we've been planning this event for about two and a half months now. It's about what it takes to pull together all our volunteers and those who are involved in um, singing, reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Veteran Michael Edgar is thankful for the Western Slope Vietnam War Memorial Park, a place that shows gratitude to those who served our country. Especially this memorial here to we that did fight in Vietnam and uh, it's uh, definitely an important part of our, our valley. First on the Western Slope, Jillian McCarthy, KREX 5 News. And the Orchard Mesa Cemetery was also full of love and remembrance yesterday, with only f over 1,500 flags covering the patriotic grounds. It's been a busy couple of days for the City of Grand Junction, Parks and Rec Department, the cemetery staff, and community volunteers. On November 9th, they began placing flags on every memorial stone in the veteran section of the Orchard Mesa Cemetery. Flags were donated by volunteers and other city cemeteries. The flags will be up and waving until later today. Along with the large spread of flags, two new benches were also placed in the veterans section of the cemetery. The benches were donated by Mike and Cindy Schultz, Mountain Air Roasters, and Snyder Garden Valley Memorials. On Veterans Day, we spend the day honoring those who have served. Many of the veterans we honor, though, need help all year long. We thought we'd feature one organization that does just that. Housing Resources of Western Colorado helps these veterans find the homes they need. Carrie x 5s Adrian Thomas spoke to one veteran who benefited from this program. There were a lot of uh, soldiers who had limbs blown off. Um, and of course, that, that causes a lot of mental problems. Joyce Whitson was an Army nurse at Fort Devens in Massachusetts during the Vietnam War. She treated soldiers who were severely injured in combat. After a long nursing and social work career on the East Coast, she returned to Grand Junction. But she developed severe parathyroid disease. This disease causes too much calcium buildup in the bloodstream and can lead to fatigue, bone and joint problems, and kidney issues. Uh, after I came back, um, I became ill and it just seemed like that I couldn't keep everything together. This is the apartment complex where veterans who work with housing resources stay while they look for permanent housing. Joyce Whitson says this program made all the difference in helping her find an affordable, comfortable place to live. Um, it enables um, vets that may have been homeless or that were struggling to find housing. Um, 
They basically are offered a voucher through the Grand Junction Housing Authority. We have six of those vouchers. First on the Western Slope, Adrian Thomas, KREX 5 News. And Joyce Whitson tells us she has now found a permanent home in Orchard Mesa. She says housing resources program helped her to enroll in government programs so she could afford that housing. While the Grand Valley is missing out on most of the early season snowfall, it's a whole nother story throughout the rest of the state. Heavy snow is being seen across the Rockies as well as the Great Plains and Colorado as an Arctic cold front sweeps through the region. From Sunday night into Monday afternoon, the front range saw sub-freezing temperatures, strong winds, and freezing rain, which eventually turned into snow. A winter weather advisory was in effect for the entire front range and the eastern plains, along with parts of southern Colorado. Temperatures below freezing were expected all day on Monday. And also around the region, Colorado roads saw multiple fatalities over the weekend. CSP says six people died in six separate accidents on state roads. The accidents all occurred over a 12-hour span. Colonel Matthew Packard with CSP says six fatal crashes occurred between about 9.30 p.m. Saturday and 9.30 a.m. on Sunday. Packard says each of the residents were involved in either excess speeding or alcohol. Officials say so far this year, more than 500 people have been killed on Colorado roadways. Those are your top five for this morning. Now it's time to look at your Ag Day Minute, the latest agricultural news affecting the nation. Today, industrial hemp and a pretty major shipping mix-up, and Ben and Jerry's faces a lawsuit over their cows. Clinton Griffiths has your full report. I'm Clinton Griffiths with today's Ag Day Minute. Soybean futures dropping double digits at one point on Monday with traders looking for clarity on where things stand on trade talks between the U.S. and China. President Trump continuing his stance saying he has not agreed to roll back U.S. tariffs sought by China, telling reporters how China would like to receive some type of a rollback, but not a complete rollback because, quote, they know I won't do it, end quote. A reported legal shipment of industrial hemp was recently seized by the New York Police Department. You see here more than 100 pounds of plants that officers thought were marijuana. They had come from Fox Holler Farms in Wilson, Vermont. Now, a lawyer for the farm says certificates with the plants showed the hemp fell well below the legal limit for THC. The NYPD seizing the hemp and arresting a shop owner who came to collect the shipment. He was later released. The plants still at a police lab for testing. Ben & Jerry's is facing a lawsuit accusing the company of false advertising because it says the milk and cream in its products comes from happy cows. Environmental advocate James Ehlers accusing the company and Unilever of deceiving consumers. He claims many of the farms that produce the milk and cream are factory style, mass production dairy operations. Well, a Ben & Jerry's spokesman saying it's proud of the work it's done with Vermont family farmers. For more Ag News, watch Ag Day weekdays on this station or anytime at agweb.com. Plus, follow us on social media. And today is National Happy Hour Day. Take this opportunity to check out some of the amazing restaurants and bars downtown that offer specials on food and drinks during their own specific happy hours. Of course, you can also celebrate happy hour probably during any day, especially on the weekends, but today is the day where we celebrate all of them. And today in history, in 1859, the first Flying Trapeze Circus Act is performed by Jules Leotard at the Circus Napoleon. Now, for the first time, Mount Vesuvius erupts in 1867. You may remember that's the same volcano that famously buried Pompeii. And in 1990, Sir Timothy John Berners-Lee, a British computer scientist, publishes a formal proposal for the creation of the World Wide Web. That was Today in History. And coming up on Wake Up Western Slope, meteorologist Megan Montgomery tells you how to best prepare for your day in just a few moments. Plus, for most of the country, an Arctic blast will bring frigid temperatures and dangerous conditions. We have more on your national headlines and, of course, your full weather forecast. Well, no Arctic blast for us, but we'll stick with some cooler temperatures for today. And then we go back on a warming trend. I'll have all the details on what's going to happen for the rest of your week coming up. Tonight on CBS. Federal agents, heads up. Hey guys, 
Where are all these images from? You saw something that got him killed. Your husband had a lot of secrets. It's always the ones you least expect. A new NCIS, then. Our DOA is the ex-surgeon general. Being a cop isn't for everyone. Put the gun down and let him go. A new FBI after a new NCIS, tonight on CBS. For those of us who've experienced injury, we remember the ones who showed up and helped out in their own way. But who will be there to help you properly manage your claim and fight to make sure you get fair compensation? At Doling Law, we take care of all that. And there's never a fee unless your claim is successful. We want you to focus on getting better. So like all the others, we'll be here when you need us. Visit DolingLaw.com to get started. Want to get lean and save some green? Help out the planet and keep our air clean? Take the GVT bus. Let someone else drive. Ride all year for only $275. 11 fixed routes and hundreds of stops. Forget about scraping nice and traffic cops. A safe, comfortable ride where you need to go. You can't compete with the price so low. And don't forget, you can bring your bike too. Your bike rides free when it's riding with you. It's really easy, so give it a try. Call them today at 256-RIDE. Welcome back and thanks so much for joining us on your Tuesday morning. Well, even though the western side of Colorado and eastern Utah, well, we stayed very clear for yesterday. Actually, some parts of our state saw some snow. Here's a look at our total snow cover for the state right now. Most of the snow fell up into the northeastern portion of our state and a little bit in the northern and central Rockies. But that had me thinking. Where exactly are we as far as snowpack and for the rest of the year? Well, here's what's going to happen, at least for what we are for right now. Our conditions are actually a little bit um, above normal for this time of year. In fact, this is the amount that we should see around this time of year. For Yampa and the White Basin, as well as everything that you see where there's a number with green colors, well, that means we are over and above the amount that we should see around this time of year. Matter of fact, if you take a look out and towards the Eastern Plains, almost 150% of what we normally see around this time of year. Unfortunately, as you go down south, it actually gets a little less. In fact, the San Juans should only be seeing, they're seeing right now 25% of what they should normally see. Of course, we still have all of winter to go, but this is where we are right now, and hopefully we'll start to gain more as far as our snow cover goes. All the details on when we're going to actually build up a little more snow, uh, that's coming up in a few weeks, but for now, we're just looking at some very clear conditions outside. You can see on our America's Mattress Live Tower camera, looking in the Grand Valley for this morning, very clear and calm. Calm conditions. The only catch is we're starting out very cold. Our temperatures this morning are in the 20s, the teens, and even single digits for some areas. 26 right now in Grand Junction, 19 in Montrose, and then it gets colder as you go up into the higher elevations. We're looking at 9 degrees right now in Gunnison. They have a lot of cold air that is just pulled up into the Gunnison area. But we're all going to warm up a little bit in the coming days. Right now we have an area of some dry air. Air that has just sat over the air, uh, Colorado. But we're actually going to see a high pressure system start to form off in the Pacific. And that high pressure system is going to be coming our way as of the end of the week. And with that, it's actually going to bring not only some sunny conditions, but some warmer temperatures as well. So for today, we're going to be cool ahead of that high pressure system. Our temperatures will be in the 50s for today. Here's a look at your afternoon highs 54 in Grand Junction and 51 in Montana with mostly sunny skies, and then it gets a little bit warmer day by day. So 54 for today, 57 for tomorrow, and then 60s by the end of the week. Montrose, we have a high of 51 for today and 54 for tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining us. Here's your road report.
multiple storm systems are on the way. Hi, most of you know me as Chief Meteorologist Chris Nation for KRX 5 and Fox 4. But you know that I'm actually a certified meteorologist with a degree in atmospheric science. This is a fast moving storm. We've got an inflow notch, deep low level rotation. Oh, and I also have an Emmy for my work in broadcast meteorology. So the next time you want fair, honest, accurate weather information that's more than highs and lows of the day, tune in every weeknight to KRX 5 and Fox 4. I've always had really bad teeth. If you're thinking about getting dentures with the implant so that they stay put, implants is the only way to go. I can't say enough nice about Dr. Benefield. He was always so kind and so gentle, and I remember him telling me, I can't think of anybody that should have a prettier smile than you because you're so nice. In fact, I, I felt like we were friends when I was done. Go to Grand Dental, Eric will fix you right up. Colorado Legacy Coffee in Grand Junction has the freshest roasted and green coffee for your home or business. They have been distributing delicious roast-to-order coffee for over 25 years. Colorado Legacy Coffee in Grand Junction. Check out their selection at LegacyCoffee.com. Don't forget about Wednesday nights, 25 cent cold domestic drafts all day long. And if you don't have time to come into the restaurant and eat, come and pick up a to-go menu. All that same good delicious barbecue is available to go. KREX 5 Storm Team Weather is brought to you by the Asthma and Allergy Center of Western Colorado. Welcome back to Wake Up Western Slope. It's now time to take a look at your national headlines. Well, if it's not cold yet, it will be, at least that goes for much of the country, as an Arctic blast brings record cold. From the Rockies to New England, the chill is expected to stretch as far south even as Florida. And some areas of the U.S. could see a foot or more of snow. Icy roads in the Midwest have already been blamed for several deaths. The Supreme Court hears arguments today in one of its highest profile cases this term. The fate of more than 700,000 young immigrants protected by the Obama-era DACA program. Several lower courts held that the Trump administration failed to adequately explain why it chose to end the program. And former President Jimmy Carter is set to undergo surgery this morning to relieve pressure on his brain. A spokeswoman says it was caused by bleeding from recent falls. The 95-year-old still continued to build homes with Habitat for Humanity after a fall last month. The White House is bracing for the start of the next phase of the House impeachment inquiry. The first public hearing will be held tomorrow. CBS's Laura Podesta reports from New York. President Trump is pushing back as Congress gets set for the first public hearing of its impeachment inquiry. After observing Veterans Day in New York City, the president again denounced the inquiry as a hoax, writing on Twitter, just like Schiff fabricated my phone call, he will fabricate the transcripts that he is making and releasing. Three more transcripts were made public Monday. The testimony shows even the Pentagon didn't know why the White House had stopped sending military aid to Ukraine. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Laura Cooper told lawmakers the funds were held without explanation. Immediately, deputies began to raise concerns about how this could be done in a legal fashion. Cooper also testified that the aid was being withheld against the advice of career officials at the Pentagon and the State Department. The funds were sent to Ukraine three weeks before their deadline. President Trump says that alone is proof the impeachment inquiry is, in his words, a one-sided witch hunt. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Yesterday, President Trump announced his intention to release the transcript of his first telephone conversation with Ukraine's new leader. Mr. Trump described it as the most important call he had with President Zelensky and said it would be put out sometime this week. Those are your national headlines. Now we're going to take things over to Carry X5 sports anchor Troy Lynch with your Tuesday morning sports wrap. Troy, good morning. Good morning, Katrin. Yeah, we have our final Friday Night Frenzy Player of the Week, except this past week, so many people played well, I gave it to three players with some honorable mentions. Let's take a look right now. Our first one comes from Palisade, Caden Sparks. He lit up 
the stat sheet last week against Summit. Scorching the Summit defense for 101 receiving yards, and you do not see that too often. 45 rushing yards. He also had three total touchdowns. We're going to give an honorable mention to Cam Tucker, who was a perfect 7 for 7 passing for 161 rushing yards and four total touchdowns. All right, and uh, we got two from Grand Junction. First off, AJ Merez, who ran the ball 14 times for 182 yards and four touchdowns. He was a man on a mission. And then Carson Loveridge, who was the workhorse in the backfield, 33 carries running for 161 yards and a touchdown. And he also returned a kick return, 96 yards for a TD. Their combined effort helped them blow out Wheat Ridge and barely earned them a spot in the 4A state tournament. So, pretty good job by the Tigers to make it. Uh, we got all of the playoff scheduling on westernslopenow.com, so you got to check it out. But that's it for sports. We'll see you right after the break. Too heavy? Try it. I got it. <laughs> wow. This looks amazing. Can I help you make a few? Sure. You sure? Huh? Hi, I'm Derek. Nice, nice to meet you. What's the ultimate dream for your business? We have this hunger project okay. that I give back to the kids to buy wow. food. How long have you had this dream? Ten years. So you're six years old and you have the dream for ten years. That's pretty good. That's someone that knows what they want to do in life. Have you ever heard a contractor say, we do it all? Well, we don't. At Foundation Repair, we specialize in systems. It keeps our costs in check and provides the best value for our customers. Foundation Stabilization or Replacement Systems. Bright white crawl space encapsulation systems. Waterproofing and water control systems. Check out our website at repaircracks.com or call us at 243-2022 and fix it for good. Right now, she's not thinking about her future, but we are. Colorado's oil and natural gas industry works to provide clean energy today as we help build sustainable, reliable energy for her tomorrow. It's not the easiest balancing act, but this is the only way to get from where we are to where we all hope to go. You're watching Wake Up Western Slope on KREX 5. Welcome back to Wake Up Western Slope. Health conscious food shoppers often want to know if what they're buying is organic or not, or whether animals have been raised humanely. Experts say those labels are tricky, and not all products meet the same standard. Lisa Mateo reports. During a trip to the grocery store, you'll find all kinds of claims and seals on food can be put on the label. But Charlotte Valais with Consumer Reports says the labels don't always mean what you think. We wanted to make sense of it for consumers and help them understand which are the claims that I can trust. The nonprofit analyzed many of the claims made on today's food. Why did you guys decide to look into this? Um, because labels are so confusing. Take products labeled non-GMO. Valet says if you really want to avoid genetically modified foods, this is the label that counts. They really should look for that non-GMO project verified seal, which has meaningful standards behind it and good verification requirements. For example, sending samples of the food to a lab to make sure it is non-GMO. For organic food shoppers, Consumer Reports gives this USDA organic seal an excellent rating. But packaging that says natural or all natural is not the same as organic. That claim gets a poor rating because it means different things for different foods, and it isn't regulated by a government agency. There is also confusing labeling when it comes to antibiotics. Consumers really should look for no antibiotics ever and then a seal to accompany it which could be USDA process verified or another one is USDA organic. And people concerned about how animals are raised should check for the seals American grass-fed, certified humane, and animal welfare approved. Ballet says a careful reading and understanding of the labels can give shoppers more confidence in their choices. Lisa Mateo, CBS News, New York. And now we're going to switch gears and look at what's going on in this morning's Money Watch report. Stocks were mixed during slower than average trading session on Veterans Day. The Dow did rise up 10 points to close at a record high for the ninth time this year. 
However, the Nasdaq fell 11 and the S&P 500 was down 6. Amazon has confirmed reports that it's planning to open a new grocery store that's not Whole Foods. It'll be located in Woodland Hills, California. Amazon says it will open sometime next year, but would not say if it's going to be part of a chain. Two years ago, the Internet retail giant spent more than $13.5 billion to buy Whole Foods. But the company says the new venture will be separate and distinct from it. And Burger King is moving ahead with its meatless meat offerings. The fast food chain says it's going to expand its Impossible Burger offerings beyond the Impossible Whopper. It'll sell Impossible Whopper Juniors, Impossible Burgers, and even Impossible Cheeseburgers at 180 locations around the U.S. Well, we've been talking about this all morning. Today, record cold will be whipping across much of the U.S., from the Southern Plains to the Mississippi Valley and the Great Lakes. According to the National Weather Service, CBS News' Laura Podesta has more on some of the wild scenes and situations the so-called Arctic blast is already creating. A winter wonderland at O'Hare Airport in Chicago turned dangerous yesterday. This plane slid across the runway as it was landing. Fortunately, no one was injured. Roads weren't much better than runways. This was the scene yesterday in southwest Michigan. You got to expect a little snow in November, but... This is a little early for me. Snowy, slick conditions caused crash after crash. Authorities say the weather was to blame for the deaths of at least three adults in Michigan and an eight-year-old girl in Kansas. Right now, the coldest air anywhere in our country is in Fargo, where it feels like, again, this is temperature combined with wind chill, it feels like one. Record-breaking cold is now settling in across the southern plains and up to the Great Lakes. By Thursday, more than 222 million Americans in about 75% of the country will shiver in temperatures below freezing. I've been here 60 years. I've never experienced winter coming so early. Today, the high temperature in Chicago is expected to reach 21 degrees seven degrees lower than the previous record for November 12th. Laura Podesta, CBS News. And this week, more than 300 cold weather records could be shattered from the Central Plains to New England and as far south as Florida. Although I'm sure that the cold front in Florida is probably a little bit different than it would be for the Midwest or New England. We'll be right back after this break with another look at your weather and, of course, what we're loving today. Don't go anywhere. I gotta go shower. Mm -mm. It's laundry night. Dishwasher needs to run. And the hot water wars. With the Renai tankless water heater, your family will have an endless supply of hot water for everything you need to do. Call 2 4 this fall, let American Furniture Warehouse help find your style. In this space, utilizing the versatility of accent pillows gives this sofa the perfect Western feel, and artwork ties the room together. You can find everything in this room at American Furniture Warehouse. Mesa Jewelers Ladies Night, an evening of hors d'oeuvres and jewelry, Saturday, November 16th from 4 to 8 p.m., featuring Allison Kaufman Champagne and Bubbles Collection with 25% off everything in the store. Mesa Jewelers, making dreams come true. Good Tuesday morning to you. It's 629 right now, and we are looking at some very clear and nice conditions outside. Actually, a beautiful start to the morning on our America's Mattress live tower camera. The only thing is, even though it looks nice outside, well, our temperatures are pretty cold right now. Our temperatures in the 20s and teens, 26 in Grand Junction, 19 in Montrose. 
And we'll even see single digits right now in Gunnison at 9 degrees. Burr, you're going to definitely want that jacket this morning for you and also for the kiddos as you drop them off for their school bus forecast. Drop off time, you'll have temperatures in the 20s and 30s and by pickup time, 40s and 50s. And our sunrise, well, it starts around close to 7 o'clock this morning and it officially starts at 6.54. It's a cold kind of morning. Let's warm our hearts a little bit with, uh, I'm calling it animal therapy and what we're loving today, right, Katrin? It is. It's literally animal therapy, but when you hear that word, you might think about dogs or cats, maybe even a horse, but this is a little bit different. It's a pig, and where this pig does therapy or is an animal therapist is in a unique situation. Let's check it out on what we're loving today. Well, pigs might not fly, but Lilu, the therapy pig, wants to make air travel less stressful. There she is. She's got her toenails painted. She's got her pilot's hat on. She's ready to go and meet some travelers today. The five-year-old pig and her owner are part of San Francisco Airport's WAG Brigade, an adorable name, a program that brings trained therapy animals to the airport to help cheer up passengers and relieve travel anxieties. All the therapy animals that take part in this training program have to go through the San Francisco SPCA and they have to have a stable temperament, good manners, and a friendly personality. Looks like Lilu there fits the bill. She walks around, she talks to travelers, and lets them pet her to ease some of those traveler anxieties that I'm sure you are familiar with. If you've ever traveled before, it can be very stressful. And of course, all of the animals that take part in the WAG Brigade are also, of course, fully trained as well. Kind of a cute way to start your morning. So if you're traveling through San Francisco, maybe you'll see Lilu. We'll be right back in just a few moments with more news, weather, and sports. Don't go anywhere. Keep a cozy home this winter with Amico Plumbing. With an experienced team of technicians, no job is too big or too small. Quality products, fair prices, and same-day service make Amico Plumbing the best choice for your heating needs. Give us a call today for a free estimate. When it comes to automotive repair, all roads lead to PDF. Whether your needs run from simple tune-ups and brake repairs all the way to fleet maintenance, PDF offers the best ASC certified service in Western Colorado. We handle diesel, RVs, and motorhomes, domestic or foreign. In fact, there's no automotive repair problem PDF can't help solve to keep your car or truck in tip-top condition. Call today or pop by 1405 Motor Street to find out how PDF Automotive can bring you peace of mind in automotive care. When you've been injured on the job, it's important to know all of the benefits that you're entitled to. Don't trust the insurance company to protect you and your family. It's far too important. Killian Davis, justice for you. Insure K Dental is now open in Grand Junction, and they're celebrating by offering free dental exams and x-rays for new patients. They accept Medicaid, most insurances, and provide discounts for those without insurance. Insure K Dental, across the street from St. Mary's in Grand Junction and on Main Street in Montrose. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is built to a higher standard, so you can focus on problems that actually matter, like figuring out which remote turns the TV on. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning from Amico Plumbing. Good morning, Western Slope. Thanks so much for joining us on your Tuesday morning. It's 6.33 this morning, and we're looking at some very calm conditions. But if you take a look at our weather at a glance, we're going to start with a very cool morning, and we're basically going to see very cool temperatures by the middle of this afternoon. The rest of the Western Slope and Eastern Utah, you are waking up to some very calm and clear conditions for this morning. The only thing is... Well, even though it looks nice outside, our temperatures are pretty cold. In fact, right now in the 20s and teens, 26 in Grand Junction, 19 in Montrose, and also teens and even single digits right now in the high country, 9 degrees in Gunnison. But we're actually going to still be a little bit on the cool side relatively. We're going to have our temperatures in the 50s. But here's how your day is going to play out. 20s by this morning. 
50s by the afternoon. I would recommend a jacket if you have one or at least wear layers. But if you don't like the cooler temperatures, we have some warmer temperatures coming our way, and I'll have all the details coming up in the next five minutes. But for now, let's go to Katrin with our news flash. All right, Megan, thank you very much. And here's everything you need to know to start your day in this morning's news flash. An Arctic cold front sweeps through the region from Sunday to Monday as the front range saw sub freezing temperatures, strong winds, and freezing rain, which eventually turned into snow. A winter weather advisory was in effect for the entire front range and the eastern plains, along with parts of southern Colorado. Temperatures dipped below freezing, and they were below freezing basically all day yesterday. Also making news around the region, snowpack levels in the Rockies are between two to three times the average. A U.S. Department of Agriculture report shows a snow water equivalent above 150 percent and 200 percent of average throughout Idaho, northern Colorado, and western Montana. The highest snowpack levels were seen in northern Colorado, with some areas reporting three times the normal snowpack for early November and many ski resorts opening earlier than usual. The snowpack statewide is 212 percent of average, though many parts of southwestern Colorado are below average, even experiencing dry and drought-like conditions. While early snowpack is above average, researchers are still studying and looking for an answer to last winter's string of destructive avalanches in the state. The Colorado Avalanche Information Center says no one living has seen avalanches that severe in Colorado. This past season, the center recorded 87 avalanches at or above the fourth strongest rating of D4 on a scale which measures severity from 1 to 5. Over the previous nine years, there have been only 24 D4 avalanches in Colorado. The center has nearly 1,000 avalanches on record for this past year, but some believe the real number was closer to 5,000. From those stories, if you're not cold yet, you will soon be, although that goes for much of the country, as an Arctic blast brings record cold. From the Rockies to a New England, the chill is expected to stretch as far south as Florida, and some areas of the U.S. could see a foot or more of snow. Icy roads in the Midwest have already been blamed for several deaths. In national news, one of President Trump's attempts to stop the release of his tax returns has been shut down on Monday. A federal judge ruled Trump can't sue New York state officials in a D.C. court at this time. The case is one of many where Trump or his administration have asked federal judges to intervene before House Democrats obtain his financial records. In this case, Trump had sued New York State and the House to stop Congress from requesting his tax returns under a New York State law. Congress hasn't yet requ requested the tax returns under that law. It's possible Trump could file a similar lawsuit with another court or we'll try again later. And Amazon has confirmed reports that it's planning to open a new grocery store that's not Whole Foods. It'll be located in Woodland Hills, California. Amazon says it will open sometime next year, but wouldn't say if it's going to be part of a chain. Two years ago, the Internet retail giant spent more than $13.5 billion buying Whole Foods. But the company says this new venture will be separate and distinct from it. And after a 35-day shutdown less than a year ago, marking the longest in history, another government shutdown could be upon us in just a few days. That's when funding for the country runs out unless Congress passes a spending bill. But some lawmakers say it's time to end the specter of a shutdown once and for all. Washington correspondent Trevor Shirley reports on the efforts to keep a shutdown from happening ever again. Memories of last year's partial government shutdown are still fresh in Washington. It cost foreclosures, it cost um, evictions, it cost families to go to payday lenders. Now another shutdown could hit on November 21st. 
there's nothing good about them, so should we, we should eliminate them. Wisconsin Republican Senator Ron Johnson supports the government shutdown prevention act, which continues funding at current levels if a new spending bill isn't passed. So we're continuing to work with you know Republican members and Democrat members that uh, really do not want to see government shutdowns anytime in the future. Virginia Democratic Senator Mark Warner introduced something similar called the Stop Stupidity Act. That would say if the government shuts down, the rest of the government would continue to operate. The only people who wouldn't get paid would be Congress, my staff, its staff, and the White House and its staff. But like so much in Washington, those ideas haven't passed, even though many in Congress say a shutdown does nothing good for the country. Neither side uh, uh, is willing to agree yet at this point in time, but we have shown strong bipartisan support. A recent congressional study showed the past five shutdowns cost the country a combined $4 billion. While a shutdown has long been a tool of political leverage, some lawmakers say it's time for it to go. I still think what we need to do is pass legislation that's maybe not very popular here, here, here on the Hill, but I think would make great sense. Reporting in Washington, I'm Trevor Shirley. All right, sports fans, stay tuned this week for all the top local, regional, and national games you don't want to miss. We're going to pull up our game schedule and take a look. Well, it's nothing but high school football playoffs for right now. Starting this Friday, we have Fruta taking on Dakota Ridge on the road at 7. Montrose hosts Brighton Friday night at 6. And on Saturday, we have a rematch between Palisade and Durango starting at 1 o'clock. All right, now we're going to take things over to meteorologist Megan Montgomery for what's coming up in your weather. Oh, take a look at our tower camera this morning. Absolutely gorgeous start to your Tuesday. The only thing is it's cold and it will be cool at least for a little while. But I'll tell you when we're going to return back to some 60 degree temperatures. That's all coming up in my full forecast. KREX 5 Storm Team Weather is brought to you by the Asthma and Allergy Center of Western Colorado. Who has the hottest selection of fireplaces and stoves this season? The Brickyard does. Whether you're building a new home or replacing an old fireplace, you have to check out this showroom at the Brickyard. The Brickyard in Grand Junction and Montrose. AAA insurance agents may seem like superheroes with many adoring fans. You'll see why when they unlock discounts that help you save on auto, home, renters, and life insurance all in one simple call. They appear to be with you wherever you go, providing peace of mind and local service when you need it most. AAA agents are your local heroes across Colorado, from Grand Junction to Durango. We have you covered. Call for a quote today or visit us online at AAA.com. Is this your loved one's idea of community? True community is so much more. It's what adds color and meaning to life. At Capella of Grand Junction, our connected and purpose-filled culture makes all the difference in our approach to assisted living and memory support care. Having independence and the feeling of community means everything when enhancing quality of life for those with memory issues. That's why at Capella of Grand Junction, our community brings us together. Because together, life sings. Brick and stone accent walls are the coolest trend this season. It's time to take those Pinterest pins and turn them into a reality. Whether you're dreaming of a beautiful outdoor space or adding texture to an accent wall, the Brickyard has all the latest styles and colors. The Brickyard in Grand Junction and Montrose. Well, good Tuesday morning to you and welcome back. We are looking at some very cold temperatures for this morning. I'll get to that in just a second, but let's warm up a little bit, at least in our hearts, with my pet of the day. Today's pet of the day has a short and simple kind of name. This is JK. Thank you so much to Raylene in Grand Junction for sending this photo in. JK looks like a, a little bit comfortable. I don't know if it's a pillow or it looks like a blanket maybe he's sitting on. But the uh, one thing I want to know is what does JK stand for? Is it after uh, the Harry Potter writer, JK Rowling? Is it just kidding? Or could it be maybe 
two initials that stand for something else. Either way, you know, sometimes you just got to get to the point, right? And thank you so much to Raylene for sending this photo in. If you have a pet that you would like to have featured as part of my pet of the day, yesterday I asked for more submissions. You guys came in clutch for me. Thank you so much. But if you want to be part of our pet of the day, just go to any of my social media profiles. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is what I'm on. And all you have to do is go to that username right there. Send your photo with your first name, pet's name, and the city you are from. So we can represent our cities on KRX5. And you never know, your pet might have been chosen for my pet of the day. Wow, look at this tower camera. Oh, what a gorgeous start to your Tuesday. The only thing is, as you step outside, you're going to want to bring a jacket. Take a look at our current temperatures right now. They're in the 20s and teens. 26 in Grand Junction, 19 in Montrose, and even colder than that in our higher elevations. You're looking at teens, even single digits right now in Gunnison, 9 degrees. We're just still dealing with a little bit of that colder air that came through yesterday. But we're going to start to see a little bit of a warming trend. First, because we have dry air that is sitting over us. That's going to allow for some clearer conditions and some sunshine to come on through today, warm us up a little bit, but we're going to get a little bit warmer by the end of the week, all because there's a high pressure system out into the Pacific Ocean. That high pressure system is going to move into Colorado by the end of this week. And as it does with high pressure systems, not only do they clear things up, so we'll see some sunny conditions as well, but it's also going to bring a little bit of some warmer temperatures by the end of the week. So if you're not into those 50 degree temperatures, well, we'll see 60s by the end of the week and we'll be just a little bit warmer than we would normally around this time of year. But for the rest of your day today, our temperatures are going to be in the 50s with 54 in Grand Junction and 51 degrees in Montrose and we'll slightly get warmer every day. 57 for tomorrow for Grand Junction, 60 by Thursday and then we'll continue with a little bit of a stormy trend by the weekend. Montrose high of 51 for today and 54 for tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining us on your Tuesday. We'll be right back. England Fence in Montrose specializes in the custom design and professional installation of fences and automatic gates. Built from high quality materials and made to last. Wood, metal, PVC, vinyl, composite. Get the perfect color and style to match your property. With a two year warranty on installation, England Fence is the only certified gate access control company on the Western Slope. They can help keep your property safe and secure with the convenience of an automatic gate. England Fence, 1568 North Townsend Avenue in Montrose. I'm Keith Killian. At Killian Davis, we've seen thousands of wrecks, but everyone is different. These aren't cases to us, these are people's lives. When necessary, we will secure the best experts to prove your case. You don't pay attorney's fees unless we win you money or settle your case. Call us for a free consultation. Killian Davis, justice for you. Welcome to the residence at Grand Mesa, a unique assisted living community offering everything you or your loved one needs to live a comfortable life. We offer our residents choices in a home-like atmosphere. At the residence of Grand Mesa, we believe every senior should have the option to maintain independence and dignity, offering quality assisted living at a remarkably affordable cost. We offer semi-private, private, and deluxe suites. Medicaid accepted. The residence at Grand Mesa. He gets fine. <laughs> Welcome back. One new feature of Wake Up Western Slope is called the Digital Desk, a segment where we go over what's trending on our KREX social media sites, web exclusive, and what's going viral this morning. Let's get right to it. Twitter was sharing some sad news yesterday that former NFL wide receiver Charles Rogers had died. He was 38 years old. USA Today reports that the former NFL tight end and friends of Rogers Chris Baker confirmed the news on Twitter after he spoke to Rogers' mom. And Rogers' high school coach said he'd heard from a number of former players that Rogers had died overnight. And Live reports that he died from liver failure. And in other news, making headlines, like headlines on Twitter this morning, an extension of the Scooby-Doo universe is coming to a screen near you. This time it's simply called Scoob. The first Scoob trailer was released yesterday. Entertainment Weekly reports that the film will reveal how the Scooby-Doo gang became friends in the first place and involves the biggest, most challenging mystery 
they've ever seen. Sounds like a really fun family-friendly film. That concludes your digital desk this morning. In other entertainment news, rock icon Neil Young reveals what's standing in his way of becoming a U.S. citizen. Plus, another classic TV show gets the big screen treatment, only this version is much darker. Let's check out what's happening in Hollywood on this morning's Ion Entertainment. Fantasies turn to nightmares in the new trailer for the big screen version of Fantasy Island. Lucy Hale, Maggie Q, and Michael Pena star in this reboot of the classic television show from the 70s and 80s. It hits theaters on Valentine's Day. I hope you're ready. Attention. CBS has set the premiere date for Emmy winner Edie Falco's new drama, Tommy. The Sopranos and Nurse Jackie actress stars as LA's first female police chief. It debuts February 6th. And the 40th season of Survivor premieres on CBS the following week, February 12th, with a special two hour episode. Finally, Canadian rocker Neil Young says his application for U.S. citizenship is being delayed because he answered honestly about his marijuana use. The Hall of Fame singer songwriter wrote on his website that he's pursuing dual citizenship in order to vote in the 2020 presidential election, adding that he lives and pays taxes in America. That's your eye on entertainment, Nishal Medina, CBS News, Los Angeles. Top Shot is Western Colorado's best source for guns, ammo, and concealed carry classes. They have the best selection and prices on in stock firearms, non lethal weapons, and special orders. Top Shot Guns, real world experience provides real world solutions. TopShotGJ.com. Want to get lean and save some green? Help out the planet and keep our air clean? Take the GVT bus. Let someone else drive. Ride all year for only $275. 11 fixed routes and hundreds of stops. Forget about scraping ice and traffic cops. A safe, comfortable ride where you need to go. You can't compete with the price so low. And don't forget, you could bring your bike too. Your bike rides free when it's riding with you. It's really easy, so give it a try. Call them today at 256 Ride. Saturday, November 23rd, Michael Martin Murphy's Cowboy Christmas returns to the Avalon Theater in Grand Junction. Bring the whole family downtown to enjoy all the hits and all your favorite holiday songs as only Michael Martin Murphy can sing them. Tickets available at avalontheatergj.com and the Avalon box office. For more information, visit sandstoneconcerts.com. You're watching Wake Up Western Slope on KREX 5. Welcome back. Make sure to tune into our noon broadcast for your updated community calendar. But before we get to your final forecast, Chief Meteorologist Chris Nation breaks down what's up with weather in his Nation report. Well, we've mentioned in a number of times this morning, but cold air is hitting the majority of the United States in a massive Arctic cold front. Chris, tell us a little bit more about this big chill. Yeah, Katrin. So I figured while Meg was focusing on our local and regional, we would talk about the big picture across the country. We dodged a huge bullet with this Arctic cold front. You can see that the Rockies acting as a shield with the most intense cold air stretching off the U.S. Canadian border. Let me show you what it's going to do as we move through the rest of today. That cold air is going to continue to surge around that core and go right up into the far northeast. We are talking about temps last night that were colder down in Dallas, Texas than they were in Grand Junction because, again, we were able to avoid the most intense air. Now, I'll show you a quick 12 hour loop of the energy. This thing has cold air and snow stretching all the way from the southeast side of New Mexico up to Chicago, and it is moving for the eastern seaboard now and has in the overnight hours, with that now approaching the edge of the water. Something else to talk about is the amount of snow this system has been producing. Massive amounts east of the Great Lakes where it's able to tap into what's known as lake effect snow. We're talking multiple feet in some of those zones outside of Buffalo, stretching right on up into Canada. And the odd thing is, this is the third Arctic cold front. Last year, we only had three total as we went through the entire winter. We're still five weeks away before we even get to winter. 
All right, Chris, thank you very much. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this cold front when we take another look at your Ag Day Minute, the latest agricultural news affecting the nation. Today, we're talking about industrial hemp and a pretty major shipping mix up. And Ben and Jerry faces a lawsuit over their cows. Clinton Griffiths has your full report. I'm Clinton Griffiths with today's Ag Day Minute. Soybean futures dropping double digits at one point on Monday with traders looking for clarity on where things stand on trade talks between the U.S. and China. President Trump continuing his stance saying he has not agreed to roll back U.S. tariffs sought by China, telling reporters how China would like to receive some type of a rollback, but not a complete rollback because, quote, they know I won't do it, end quote. A reported legal shipment of industrial hemp was recently seized by the New York Police Department. You see here more than 100 pounds of plants that officers thought were marijuana. They had come from Fox Holler Farms in Wilson, Vermont. Now, a lawyer for the farm says certificates with the plants showed the hemp fell well below the legal limit for THC. The NYPD seizing the hemp and arresting a shop owner who came to collect the shipment. He was later released. The plants still at a police lab for testing. Ben & Jerry's is facing a lawsuit accusing the company of false advertising because it says the milk and cream in its products comes from happy cows. Environmental advocate James Ehlers accusing the company and Unilever of deceiving consumers. He claims many of the farms that produce the milk and cream are factory style, mass production dairy operations. Well, a Ben & Jerry's spokesman saying it's proud of the work it's done with Vermont family farmers. For more Ag News, watch Ag Day weekdays on this station or anytime at agweb.com. Plus, follow us on social media. Local news right in your pocket. Download the KRX5 News mobile app on your Android or Apple device. Now you can customize which alerts and notifications you get. Just click the settings tab, customize alerts, and select what you want. Local breaking news, local weather, and even up-to-date scores and highlights from the CMU Mavericks and Denver Broncos. All in the palm of your hand. Stay connected with the KRX5 News mobile app. Download today on Google Play or the App Store. Have you heard about the Ritz? What's the Ritz? When you walk in, wow! Ritz consignment in Grand Junction with four furniture showrooms. Save money on beautiful quality furniture and home decor decorated with special upscale flair. It's a fun place. Pre-owned consigned items added daily. Easy drive-up parking. Superior customer service with delivery available. Come see what all the talk is about at the Ritz. First Street and Orchard Avenue. See our inventory at RitzConsignment.com. In the Army National Guard, family means everything. Our parents, they were really supportive that all five of us would join. Serving part-time in the Army National Guard instills pride that you and your family will share. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about part-time service. Closed captioning brought to you by Pinnacle Hearing Aid Center. Coming up, a major winter storm wreaks havoc from Texas to Maine, leaving snow, record-breaking temperatures, and travel delays in its path. Plus, we're at the Atlanta Hospital where former President Jimmy Carter is scheduled to undergo brain surgery. Coming up on CBS This Morning. Well, here's a final look at your forecast for today. While the rest of the country is dealing with some very cold temperatures for the rest of the day, we're just going to deal with a little bit of some cold temperatures for this morning, and then we're going right back up to some cooler temperatures for today. So here's a look at our seven-day forecast. 54 for today for Grand Junction, 57 for tomorrow. We'll get in those 60-degree temperatures by the end of the week. For Montrose, we have a high of 51 for today and 54 for tomorrow, I would go grab a jacket. I just walked outside. It is pretty cold outside, but at least we're <laughs> thankful for some heat, right, Katrin? <laughs> yeah, it's nice and warm in here, but uh, again, make sure you are nice and safe out there and nice and toasty when you go outside. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for Wake Up Western Slope and for our noon broadcast. We're getting low on quotes, so make sure you send in those quotes for us to clip for our quote poll. We'll see you back here again tomorrow morning. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.